thank you, Marka. Uh, so it's uh, it's great to be here. Uh, so everyone starts uh, their talk with how they first met John about 25 uh, years ago, which is true for me as well. It was uh, March, I think, of 98 or not, or 97. It was 97. So exactly, yeah. And uh, Montreal was covered with snow and it was very cold. But, but I met a lot of people uh, who I now see here for the first time back then. In 2004, I was here on my first sabbatical with John. Uh, Help to arrange, and in fact, this is this was here when I first spoke on on, on the topic of cluster algebras, um, and uh, so I wanted to uh, thank John for that and for many kind of conversations over the year. And this is one of the most welcoming cities, both mathematically and 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 as a city. And to prove that uh, we do know each other, have a picture. This is Shanghai in 2014, and uh, you also can see. Yatek Shmigelsky there. So there's something with, um, yeah, there is a feedback. I'm sorry about that. Uh, okay, so um, I'm not going to talk about uh, uh, integrable systems directly, but I will talk about objects on which integrable systems live. Um, and uh, I don't know that, I, I know that, uh, well, everyone enjoys coordinate free approach uh, to things, but People in the integrable community still appreciate uh, nice coordinates when they see them. And so that's what I'm going to talk about, how on this uh, Poisson Lee group, so more generally Poisson homogeneous uh, uh, spaces, uh, you can find coordinates in which uh, um, your Poisson structure becomes essentially flat. Uh, so not so secret goal is uh, to build cluster structure on this. And uh, well, maybe, I will be punished for that, but I will start trying to explain what cluster structures are. I'm not going to give a full definition, but I'm going to start with examples, and then we'll get to um, actually post only groups. What do we really want there? Um, um, so let's let's assume we have a Poisson variety, uh, and uh, what we want to find is this, this chart made a really nice. Uh, 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 coordinates uh, well uh, atlas made of really nice coordinate charts uh, with, with the following property so uh, for technical reasons we actually want this uh, uh, variety also to have nice uh, uh, chorus action and we would want um, all coordinates and all the charts to be homogeneous with respect to this torus action um, and then we want uh, every chart to be i will call it quote unquote compatible so it's different compatible than with incompatible Poisson structure so i have to warn you there will be a lot of terms that have different meaning here than than usual ones and uh, compatible in the following sense that if you take Poisson bracket of any two of them uh, it will be just a, a constant uh, usually integer constant or rational constant times the product of starts meaning that if you take logs it will be just constant uh, there is a particular reason why we want to preserve this shape because we're going to deal with quadratic Poisson brackets and um, there is a, a result by uh, uh, Nick Owenhaus and John Machacek, which are students of Misha Shapiro, that shows that if you allow only rational transformations of coordinates, you start with something quadratic, this is as simple as you can get, so you cannot linearize it or make it constant otherwise. Uh, I think I did, but uh, sorry. Um, now, uh, what else do we want? We want uh, any two of these coordinate charts to be connected by a really simple uh, transformations that will be Laurent polynomials in both directions, which is also a very strong condition. And finally, we want this family of charts to be rich enough so that any regular function uh, on our variety is Laurent polynomial in terms of every uh, one of these coordinate charts. Yes, so it looks like a lot to ask. So let me give you an example. Uh, so here's an example. Uh, here my variety is GL2. Uh, the so called standard force on the uh, bracket. We'll talk more about this later, but uh, let me just write it down explicitly. So it almost looks like this compatible chart, almost except for this uh, uh, Poisson bracket, um, and determinant is Casimir. Uh, and, but, but we can select two coordinate charts, which is log canonical, because determinant is Casimir. So you can look at uh, this uh, 
A, B, C, and determinant chart, which is a coordinate chart, uh, or you can say, replace A with D. Uh, there are reasons why B, C, and delta are in blue, they're so called frozen variables, we're not allowed to touch them, but uh, transition from one chart to another is given through uh, this really uh, simple uh, transformation, which is just a formula for two by two de determinant, but uh, well, in plus this year, we like to write our formulas with no, with no minus sign. So uh, this is how you can read. And then there is this picture. So I draw, I, I draw a quiver here, which just helps you to remember how to compute two by two determinants. But, so, uh, but something happened to the quiver as well. Uh, something simple. So here I just uh, replace directions of all the arrows that point at, at, at this vertex where A used to be. And then uh, I replace it with D, so it will become a little bit more involved later. So, but this is an example of a cluster structure, which is called compatible because the Poisson bracket has this nice uh, form. Uh, it's called regular because all the functions that we are using here are regular functions on the space of two-way two matrices. And finally, it's called complete because I can restore every single natural coordinate matrix entry as a Laurent polynomial. In terms of every class, uh, well, so we call this families of, uh, 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 of functions, coordinate function class. Okay, so that's an example. Of course, it's too simple. So let's let's uh, consider a different example. So here we'll switch gear and talk about cluster structure without first explicitly mentioning um, Poisson brackets. And uh, so this is a cluster structure on on. Uh, Double bra cells due to the restraint from the Lorensky. Uh, so it's in general double bra cells, but we will not need the uh, double bra cells for this talk. So let's just suppose that we have a simple, uh, 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 simply connected Lee. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, and I'm back to, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, so uh, on, on, on the group G itself, so uh, first of all, these coordinate charts here, we will call them clusters now, uh, they are made, uh, some of them, many of them are, are made of, of minors, uh, if we're talking about SLN or GLN or generalized minors in, in other simple Lie groups. Uh, all the variables obtained uh, uh, through this uh, Laurent polynomial transformations remain regular. Uh, it is a complete cluster structure, so in, in a sense that uh, a ring of regular functions is um, isomorphic to so-called upper cluster algebra, what we will talk about this uh, later. So cluster algebra is generated by all the functions in all these charts. And upper cluster algebra is a little, a little bit larger. And then finally, what is uh, relevant to our talk, is they are compatible with a standard Poisson Lee bracket on, on, uh, on the group G. Uh, this Poisson Lee bracket actually appeared uh, implicitly in Lasse's talk, but uh, uh, I, I will uh, again talk about this a little bit later. And uh, there are more nice properties. So uh, you can consider the following subgroups inside of uh, my group. And I, all my examples will be for, for SLN case, but or, or GLN case, but uh, uh, they uh, many of them extend to uh, more general situations. So you have this canonical embeddings of two by two upper and lower uh, triangular matrices into n by n matrices. You just take this two by two matrix and embed it as a block uh, inside the matrix. And uh, on this upper and lower triangular matrix, you do have uh, this uh, low canonical, very simple Poisson structure. And it, you can show that it is Poisson Lee, definition is to come, uh, but all these maps are Poisson. So this, this can be used as a definition, actually, defining property of uh, for standard post on this structure. Okay, so we have this little building blocks from which you can assemble um, a generic element of your group. And there are these maps which are Poisson. And so uh, this cluster structure, in fact, reflects combinatorics of the corresponding while group. Uh, so I can be more explicit here. Uh, so what you can do, you can take sufficiently many copies of this upper and lower triangular two by two matrices, uh, sufficiently many means the uh, length of the longest while uh, group element. And then you can embed them uh, each, each, each copy here 
embed using a particular uh, embedding row that we see, see above considers this product and you will obtain and then multiply by the element of the carton and then you obtain open dense okay open dense set inside your group G. And so what are these indices here? Indices here represent this is IK and JL. They represent two uh, distinct uh, reduced word decomposition for the longest element of the while group. All right. So everything fits nicely together here for some structure and combinatorics of while group. And we have this nice coordinates. Um, um, which so and, and the reasons that you can actually uh, find regular compatible coordinates on the entire group is that uh, some of the minors or generalized minors can be expressed as monomial monomial functions in terms of these parameters of this little two by two matrices and it is easy to see that if you have this simplest quadratic bracket on uh, on some sort of coordinates, any monomial transformation will preserve this property. This is just the language. All right. So let's let's just be more explicit. Let's consider one example. Uh, uh, so I'm using the word seed here well, due to Fanin and Zelensky. So this cluster algebra generated by all these functions, they grow from seeds. Seed is a collection of functions, this initial uh, coordinate chart. And then uh, additional data, which is uh, uh, which tells you how to transform them, is encoded in a quiver in just a directed graph. So maybe let me go through this slowly. So uh, this is a example of GLN, which an example was here in, in my picture. N is equal to four. Okay, so I'll have to explain this picture because it it, it contains all the information that one needs. Uh, so we're looking for coordinates on, on GL4, right? So we need 16 coordinates. It is natural to arrange them because in, in, in this uh, four by four grid. And um, so for each, uh, at, at each vertex, I will place a function. This will be part of my uh, coordinate chart. So what is that function? Uh, well, it's easy to describe. You just uh, consider your element of GL4, four by four matrix, so n by n matrix. You start at this, ij uh, uh, entry and then drop a diagonal until it hits the boundary so it can hit this boundary or this boundary and then on this diagonal you base the maximal possible uh, dense submatrix with no gaps in rows and columns and then you compute determinant of that submatrix so this fij this determinant is defined like that maximal dense minor with xij in the, in the upper left corner all right so this is my coordinate chart. I claim that these functions, all these functions, with respect to standard Poisson Lie bracket, have very nice uh, Poisson bracket. So it's just the bracket between any two of them is a product times some constant. Constant is well, maybe not so nice, but it's integer. Um, and then, uh, and then there are rules of transformations of this function because I want to build many, many of this uh, of this coordinate charts, and they rules are like that. Uh, so. Uh, for any, if, so if I want to transform this function, for example, that sits here, all I do, I will consider a monomial uh, obtained by product of all functions to which, uh, which point to this uh, vertex in the curve. So the products are of this one and this one in this case, plus monomial obtained by product of all functions to which this vertex points. And then divided by the original function of it. That's a cluster transformation. If it looks strange, it shouldn't, because this is uh, an example that you have seen a lot in uh, through mathematics. The Jacobi uh, identities, uh, short Lucky relations, Kerota uh, equation in different forms, they all look like that. So all, all, all these three term relations look like that. Uh, but this is not the whole story because after I've done that, I have to know how to transform these functions next. And to do that, I have also to mutate this quiver. So I've, I've shown an example of how to do this. So I'm trying to do this at this vertex. And uh, what I have to do, uh, whenever I have a two uh, paths, directed two paths through this vertex, I add a shortcut. So, uh, for example, there is this directed pass 
through this matrix, I add the shortcut. You, you see this. Uh, well, if I add the shortcut, sometimes I will uh, I will create an arrows going back and forth between two vertices, and I cancel them. I don't like uh, the two, so I will cancel them. And finally, I will uh, change the direction of all the arrows incident to this vertex in particular. That's what's called quiver mutation. Uh, short plate relations. Short. Yeah, short plate relations. Yeah, a cluster transformation. All right, so uh, that's uh, that's uh, a definition. It looks weird, and in fact, uh, when uh, Misha, Alec, and I started working on this, we wanted to to to, to understand this uh, mutation better. And then, uh, with the way to do it, what we did, we tried to introduce a Poisson bracket on an abstract cluster algebra, and then it turned out that killer mutation is nothing but the change of the Poisson structure constant after you do this. Mark, you have a question? Yeah, to F after the mutation, so the, I, I will add shortcut like this, ah, and, yes. then, and then and they will cancel. Right, but, but long story short, this is a one once you do mutation, this is what happens, and then you can show that in this particular case, the result of all these mutations at any of the vertices will be still a regular function. Why? Well, because of Luca relations, uh, the Nanoya Corby relations, there is nothing else, there is, those are all the identities. Discrete yeah. In the cluster system. Uh, discrete KP, discrete Toda, and many, many other. Uh, that, uh, well, probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be, I'm, I'm being recorded, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, so let's look at the properties of, of this particular cluster structure. So, uh, first of all, it's, it, it's regular, as I said, yes. Like, uh, what are the frozen nodes? Uh, frozen, oh, really good uh, point. So frozen nodes, in this case, according to my definition, they, they are uh, they are minors of uh, original element which obtain like this. So you you, you go uh, like along the anti-diagonal in both directions, and you consider maximum family of nested minors. Why are they frozen? Because there is a Poisson meaning for that as well, because vanishing locus of any of these functions is a Poisson submanifold, and we don't want to type them. Okay? Uh, but it's a good question because we're going to unfree some of them in a moment. Okay, so the properties are that, uh, uh, as I said, this is a regular uh, process structure because all the functions that I will obtain will be polynomial in, in, in matrix entries. It is complete. Because I can just through the sequence of mutation, it's not hard to see that you can obtain actually every every matrix entry will be part of our coordinate system at some point. And uh, all of these functions within a given coordinate chart will have this nice Poisson bracket. So they will be compatible or log canonical. And this is because uh, X can be assembled from this little two by two pieces. And then you can actually restrict it to nicely to upper triangle. So this part of the picture will uh, give you a similar structure on upper triangular matrices, and this part will give you a similar structure on lower triangular matrices. So it's 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 very nice combinatorially pleasing. Mm -hmm. Since you can assemble from these two by two, yeah, uh, it means that all the entries are actually some complicated monomials. Yes, all the entries are complicated. Uh, <clears throat> Term positive for okay. one <laughs> but the nominals, yeah. All right. So okay, but uh, okay, how, how unique is this structure as far as GLN is concerned? So let's let's just modify it, it a little. Uh, so it's the same picture, but what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to unfreeze one of those frozen variables. So previously here was just an entry x for one, and I'm going to replace it with this strange thing with lo which looks like a minor, but it's not a minor. If you look at yeah, because there is a shift in. Oh, sorry. Is it? No, sorry about that. Okay, can you see now? So, oh, okay. Yeah, the system is there. So okay, I'll, I'll try to keep it in place. Uh, so what, what I'm doing here, I'm replacing one of the functions. Uh, you can point on the board. Like yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, yeah. Let, so, yeah, so we'll, uh, I'm replacing one of the functions. This used to be just x for one. I replace it with this function, which again, it's pretend minor. It's not a minor. You can, you can look at it closer. So maybe 
maybe your linear algebra students will write this as a minor, but it's not, right? Because there is a yeah, the shape, there is the shape. And I unfold, uh, I, I, I decided to unfreeze it, and then I modified the core, so my rules of transformation slightly different now. And I will not bore you with that, but uh, but uh, what I can say is that well, what are the properties? So again, uh, uh, right? Let's look. So it's regular, uh, still, it's still complete, but in a more generalized sense, which I will not go into. But what is it compatible with? What happened to our Poisson bracket now? Because I, I did something to my functions without any regard to Poisson bracket. And then no longer we have this upper and lower parts uh, the, uh, well, uh, of my picture relate to upper barrel or lower barrel. So that has to be replaced with something. So also looking at GF4 as a subgroup of GF5? No. no. Okay. Uh, so, okay. So, okay. I know I'm a little worried about, okay, let's. Let's wait. So I'm going to do it again if 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 uh, the picture uh, yeah if the system will allow me. Uh, so same story. Uh, now I'm, I'm going to uh, do something to several more functions. So remember, uh, in, in each vertex of my graph, there was a function with x i j in the upper left corner. So I still have this function with f x i j in upper left corner. So with x one two x two three x three four, but now they are again minors in some strange matrix which are obtained by taking two blocks and just gluing them askew together, and uh, and the claim is that I have to modify my quiver even further. This is how it will look like, but uh, so so the yellow vertices are still our original functions. But again, we have something which is regular, which is complete, uh, but we don't know what is it compatible with. Yeah, okay. So, uh, so let me now try to, to, to explain all of that. And for that, we need. Uh, so, when you say compatible with one, you mean. Well, it's, it's this, this, yeah, this function is no longer uh, uh, nice with respect to standard post only structure. Okay, so uh, to continue, uh, I need to go through more generalities about relation between Poisson geometry and, and cluster algebra. So, so here's a general setup again. I have a Poisson variety. Um, we, and somehow, I don't know how we found uh, a chart which has this nice Poisson algebra. Uh, and so then just from that, I can build a cluster structure. Uh, how do I do it? So we have the structure constant for Poisson bracket. I, I, I build the matrix of them. I will partially invert this matrix, partially meaning because we have, remember, we have this frozen vertices, so we don't, we don't count them. So this, this one is, is, is rectangular. And so uh, this will be adjacency matrix from my quiver. So again, I have structure constant from them. I build this adjacency matrix. Uh, and uh, in addition, we want some homogeneity with respect to tail section, but let's let's keep it for now. So, and this is this is my initial seed. So Poisson structure determines the seed, and the nice and the good news is that after I do mutations, something will happen to that. But what happens to the quiver will be the square mutations will exactly what makes this this property to preserve. So it's it's it's. Uh, not that complicated, okay, and then and then with that some additional work, we can show that uh, uh, well, in, this, in, in examples that this the resulting structure is actually uh, regular, but that's an additional condition and and complete. So, what are the important cases of this? Let's wait for slides to catch up. Uh, important cases are personally groups. So that we started to talk uh, about before. So Poisson Lee groups, we have a group endowed with a Poisson structure such that multiplication map is Poisson or Poisson homogeneous spaces. Uh, it's the same story. Group Poisson Lee group acts on, on a Poisson variety such that action map is Poisson. Uh, not all of these setups will lead to cluster structures. This is, we actually have an example of that, but there is a particular subclass uh, and those are also Poisson Lee groups, which are covered by the Lavin Greenfield classification. Um, so uh, let me go through that now. Uh, 
So um, what is a beloved general classification? So uh, we're dealing now with uh, simple uh, Lee groups, and we have the following beloved general field data. There is a combinatorial part of the data, which is uh, a map from a subset of simple positive roots to another subset of simple uh, positive roots, which is an important isometry. So isometry, it's it's clear, roots live in Euclidean space, and uh, so you have two sets of roots which which uh, set, uh, which form isometric, uh, which are symmetrically equivalent. And important means uh, the following. So this this gamma takes a root and sends it to another root. That other root may also be in, in gamma ones and may intersect. So the importance means that after applying this map sufficiently many times, we will get out of gamma one. Okay. So this this is a combinatorial data. I will, I will give examples in a moment. And then there is a continuous data, which is a part of a, a tensor product of Cartan subalgebra with itself, which uh, is a solution to some linear equation determined by this gamma, which I, I don't want to. So there is some flexibility. All right, and from this data, so that what was the line doing for classifications? They were classifying so called quasi triangular R matrices. So uh, from this data, you can build an R matrix. I'll just uh, flash a formula for that. Uh, so that's an R matrix. It's an element of a tensor product of G with itself. Uh, this part is so called standard R matrix. And then there is some deformation which is governed by, by this uh, map gamma, which I now apply into root vectors rather than roots. So, well, so the, here, is a, here is how you can extend. Okay. And then you can build Poisson bracket and it's easy to write this bracket again for for the case of of matrix uh, uh, groups uh, so this is what used to be called leningrad formula and then st petersburg formula and uh, well let's we just call it the formula uh, and uh, so uh, it contains information about bracket between any two entries of xij so this object lives in a tensor square and this is this is how it's defined using the r matrix and the claim that the result in bracket is Poisson, Poisson uh, Lee. And you can again do more general thing, and uh, you can build from two such R matrices a Poisson homogeneous bracket. So here I have group G with this bracket on which the same group X by multiplication on both sides. This is equipped with one R matrix. This is, well, sorry about this horrible notation, R R right. And this is our left, and this action is 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 Poisson homogeneous. Okay, so it's a great variety of Poisson dynamics, and we have this conjecture that uh, uh, any one of those, for any one of those, there is a compatible, regular, complete, possibly generalized. I will not get into that cluster structure on on the group. Equipped with this bracket. So, so again, I want to emphasize the same group, but we require our coordinates to be to be uh, uh, this nice coordinates with respect to um, uh, to, to, to to variety of brackets. Okay, and this conjecture we, we proved it uh, in a very long paper that's to appear in memoirs uh, for for GLN and so-called oriented aperiodic pairs of data. So I'll have to explain what, what, what this are. And then to, to explain that this oriented business is, is quite irrelevant. Yes, ma'am. Especially the use of the use of the strange from yeah. uh, our matrix uh, structures. Do yeah. they share the same Casimir's? No. No, 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 no. They're, yeah, Casimir's change and, uh, uh, yeah. So if it's still Poisson Lee, then at least uh, well conjugation invariant functions are still still in involution. But uh, yeah, the the, the plastic wave structure is, is is very different in fact. So for example, it that, it isn't true that uh, uh, some plastic loops are foliated in a toric torus orbit. So 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 called T leaves. Already that is not. So so what is what, what is this uh, business is oriented a periodic? So let me let me give you examples. Uh, so here's an example of the Robin Greenfield data. This is stop. So this this is A3. 
this is one subset of roots, another subset of roots, and this is the map gamma. And uh, so, uh, well, of course, this tools will be oriented whether or not I will map, uh, well, first into first, first into second, or, or vice versa. So this is oriented, this is not oriented. And that turned out to be not so important. What's aperiodic? So um, for aperiodic, I have to uh, add additional decoration to the picture. So this is again set of roots in the gamma one, set of roots in gamma two, uh, the map gamma. And then I draw this arcs. If you think about this, these arcs are nothing but the action on the uh, on the linking graph of, of, of a negative uh, longest element of the wild. Okay. And so if I draw this graph and it has no cycles, then I call it aperiodic. And you'll say you should call it acyclic. I should, but, but there is something else that is called in quasi theory acyclic. So I have to call it aperiodic. And when there is a cycle, unfortunately, I have to call it non aperiodic. So sorry about that, but uh, it's not perfect. But, yeah. So, so there is something distinctly different between this picture and this picture. All right. Uh, so, uh, so we proved that uh, there are this compatible structure. I'll give you an example, and it looks very strange, as uh, you would expect. So, here's an example. Uh, so, the data is above alpha one, alpha two, alpha four goes alpha three, alpha four, alpha one. Uh, here's the picture, and here is the initial cluster. This is all I need. I'm going to place it on this square, this square grid, and. Uh, so what, what, what's here? So I have this usual. This is just my matrix. This is one of those matrices glued from taking blocks or sub-blocks, and another one more complicated. So I have this uh, uh, three objects, and then I take uh, trailing principal minors, dense principal minors in all three of them. If you count them, you will find that there is exactly twenty-five of them. I take these functions. You will also notice if you will, if you have good uh, eyesight, that uh, every matrix entry appears exactly once as an upper left corner. Okay, and so I claim that these strange functions first behave very nicely with respect to the Poisson Lie bracket defined by the data, and if you place them at the quiver as we did before, according to this upper. Uh, 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 left entry, then the clue will be almost the same, almost the same as we've seen for the standard case, except why some of this uh, uh, blue references will be frozen and connected with arrows in some ways that I, well, I will actually try to show, but well, so that's that's how it will look like if, uh, yeah. Uh, so yellow again, standard functions is uh, green as this wild functions and then there are this additional arrows going from top to bottom and, uh, and left to right but in the bulk it's the same all right so uh so that, that that's a construction looks very very strange and so here's a criticism a criticism of this construction uh so uh, yeah so you have to be self-critical uh so first of all uh Definition of this initial cluster is completely ad hoc. So, so you, what, what's, what's its uh, lyceratic meaning, right? It's you just build some strange matrices. Secondly, yeah, so that's 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 criticism number two. And then the proof that these things actually have uh, nice uh, uh, Poisson relations took us 40 pages of horrible co co computation. So it's it's just bad. So we needed a better understanding of that. And we couldn't keep in the group itself, we had to go to Greenfield Dub and do computations there and then restrict to the group. Uh, not always better than that because it, it left my graduate, former graduate student, Dmitry Valashin, to uh, uh, well, define cluster structure actually on a Greenfield double uh, compatible with, with all of this brackets. But we need a better understanding of what's going on. And uh, uh, so, what, what would be better? First of all, it will be better if we can use a factorization like uh, Bernstein for means of Lewinsky in something smaller. But there are no nice uh, posts on Lisa groups of this small size in, in, in this case. So we cannot just do it direct. And we can also use this uh, one like, uh, I said, from the reality. So there is this well known factor, probably due to, you know, to Semen of Tenshansky, that if you have uh, 
a group of group with this pair of uh, vector corresponding to two matrices and another one with another two matrices with uh, middle one the same, then multiplication map is four sort. So maybe you can start with one sided one. So you take our matrix standard, standard and matrix, glue them together somehow, but then you have to find pieces that have a, a correct number of parameters when you do the glue. So, um, and uh, the hint was actually given by, by, by the way we in, in, in previous work proved uh, proved uh, completeness. So I, I will not go into the detail how we did it, but we managed to uh, somehow relate but then uh, uh, through inductive procedure, uh, an element say of G corresponding to this complicated bracket to an element of G corresponding to standard bracket through some cluster transformations, which then turned out to be uh, uh, comprised into a very simple formula. So this map turned out to be the, 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 the map back was, uh, was birational. So it's, uh, this, this part is upper triangular rationally depending on Z. This part is low triangular rationally depending on Z. So, so maybe we can understand that. Um, so let's try to go was a new recipe for this and I will I will start with it it was a one-sided case because it's easier to explain so what's and 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 advantages of this recipe is that it's 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 least theoretical in nature so uh so suppose we have this uh one-sided beloved and gentle data meaning we have some matrix uh, uh, corresponding to the left action and the standard one corresponding to the right action so I'll take an element uh uh, so I'll take an element in my group, but I view this as a group well, equipped with this Poisson bracket. And then I do the usual thing people do. At least you uh, can see the Gauss factorization, the generic element. Okay, so this is Cartan, this is upper unipotent, and this is lower unipotent. And lower unipotent, I can split into two further factors. So remember that we had, the, we had two subsets of simple positive roots. So each uh, so subset of simple positive roots will also generate a, 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 a natural uh, least sub, subgroup. So I will take first, I, I will split it in such a way that we have this uh, element of the lower new potent uh, Levy component corresponding to this, uh, to this gamma one. So in, in general, this will be just a block low triangular matrix which is block matrix okay and blocks are determined by the set of rules okay and then uh, and then i will consider the rest of it so you can do it in a minimal way so in a in sort of minimal way so uh, it, it becomes unique this is this is not part of a subgroup but this this is okay so okay i i, I haven't done anything yet i just chose a parameterization uh, so uh, this this parameterization is consistent with uh, with the longest group element being split again in a minimal way into longest element of a wide group corresponding to this gamma and the rest, right? And, and the fact. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have this map gamma corresponding to my left matrix that. Uh, um, well, that acts like this in a natural way. And then we have a twist. Again, this is something that is class to see people use in, in different contexts, but what, what is a twist? So I, I have this part, which is low triangular. I multiply it on the right by corresponding element of the longest element of the vial group, but corresponding to the parabolic. It's no longer triangular. I can factor it with respect to Gauss factorization. Again, it takes the upper triangular part. So this was lower triangular multiplied. So in, in, in pictures, it's actually easy to represent, but well, uh, I, I, I didn't have time for that, but uh, so one, so it becomes like anti triangular and then you factor it, right? According to Gauss. So this is a twist map, all right? And then I can build the four layer map, which appeared so from all this from all these manipulations I, so, so the, the method is like this so I, I, I'll, I'll, after this factorization I will twist uh, this initial part this one 
and then shift it with respect to by map gamma. Okay, so notice that uh, this is no longer Gauss factorization because uh, uh, something lower uh, became something upper. But the good news is that this map is birational and Poisson. Okay, so it's birational and Poisson. Uh, and what, what does it body, uh, body is that it is variation on person? Well, we have this really nice coordinates made of minors over here. And I have this map which is variation on person. So I can take this nice coordinates and pull them back. They will become something rational, but then I clear denominator and this will give, produce my initial C. Okay, so well, there are some things that, that needed to be checked, but uh, so it's uh, this construction helps you to prove at least Poisson properties of the corresponding functions for free. Um, and so, how does it look? Well, here's how it will look. Uh, so, uh, suspense is killing me. Okay, let's uh, let's see how. Yeah, uh, there it is. So after we've done that, it turns out that this, this, this uh, shifted block matrix is glued according to gamma appears in natural, in natural way. So, well, maybe surprisingly, maybe not, but our ad hoc answer turned out to coincide with, with an actual uh, uh, informed answer. So this, this, this part is easy, but this is, um, well, I mean, easy, but uh, well, uh, more easy to explain. Uh, but this is just when when one side is uh, um, is, is standard of our x. Okay, so let's see. I have still a little bit of time. So, what about what about two sided case? Um, so uh, things are more complicated here for the following reason. Uh, here we'll have to to act in the opposite directions from from the standard. To, to the too too complicated. So uh, this is a standard again. I, I will I will break it into pieces exactly like that. Uh, except I do it on the right and on the on the left left and on the right. Okay, and uh, and then uh, there are these maps which look much more more complicated. So but let me go through that. So uh, I'll have again. I split up this Levy component. I apply the twist to it. I split up a corresponding Levy component and apply the different twist to it. So what, what, why is it different? So I multiply by the longest element on the other side and then Gauss factorization has to be in the opposite order, otherwise it doesn't work. Uh, and then, uh, well, this row actually does something also complicated. So I use my map gamma by isometry lifted to the group and I apply it to this twisted element and then apply a power of it, and then second power of it, and so on. And I build directed product of those things, which says from one to infinity. But remember, this gamma was new potent. Because gamma was new potent, this is actually a finite product. So it looks like a like horrible map, but, well, it's not entirely horrible because it is still possible. The trouble with that is that you actually now need to, 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 to use a strategy of, 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 uh, of uh, pulling back nice coils, you have to invert it. And so this is, uh, this is where this notion of aperiodicity comes into play because it turns out that in the aperiodic case, the map is biration. And then you can lift these functions. So, yeah, let me just say it. So it is, it is variational. So it, it is, it is uh, going to produce uh, an initial cluster uh, as an explicit computation of the of the inverse. If we don't have, if we have non aperiodic case, then it's it's more complicated. I may have a moment to say something about that. But uh, and we do have an answer, which is correct, but we do not have a full proof. So. People don't call it conjectures as they call it theorems in progress. So that's what it is. But let me actually go back to the examples that I've shown before. This uh, weird example, which will become less weird because I can uh, actually describe to you exactly how this inverse map works. And now it maybe becomes less, less uh, uh, mysterious. So this is an example I, I've shown before. Uh, and um, this is uh, 
the same set of functions. So how does inverse work? work? Uh, so uh, we have this map from standard to to uh, to the to, to the x uh, equipped with to, to g equipped with this uh uh the greenfield Poisson bracket and i told you that uh, the functions in initial cluster are this training principle minus of this huge matrices okay so what are they in terms of the standard Poisson structure so from which we have this um, have this map and it's easy to show in this picture, so I, I highlighted things in green. So let's let's look at x three two, right? X three two. Let's drop this diagonal down. And if you look just at the gray shadow here, you will have uh, matrix that decomposes. So you have this three by three minor, this three by three minor, uh, four by four minor, and then this three by three minor. And you will notice that all these guys are actually in the standard initial clusters that I've shown in the very beginning. And so the, the transition maps works, works exactly like this. So the claim is that, that uh, this holiday minor, in terms of this element of this uh, equipped with a standard Poisson restructure, is just a monomial, this monomial in terms of uh, just uh, standard uh, coordinates uh, produced by Bernstein, Fanon, and Zelevitz. Uh, all right, so uh, that's how it works. And then I have another slide, but this for, for non a periodic case. But so, okay, that's a, that's a picture that will probably remain a mystery. So the only thing I, I, I can say is that this, this block matrices in this case turned out to be infinite periodic, which uh, leads to characteristic polynomials of, of matrix pencils and actual constructions that are very much related to Malcolm's uh, talk yesterday needs to be applied here to produce a corresponding cluster structure. But that's, well, yeah, okay. That's another quiver. Uh, but that's a more, more important thing. Thank you. Questions? Uh, yeah. I have two, two questions. First is just, uh, do, do you play this game also for exceptional groups? Uh, yeah, so it, it yeah it doesn't doesn't matter really. So uh, this uh, business about Poisson maps it doesn't doesn't depend on, on the matrices. Uh, that, that is so. So there is a uh, there is a way to interpret this block. So if you if you write a, a colon and and row block Laplace expansion, you will recognize that there is a, a least theoretic meaning to to sums that will appear in the process. So. Uh, so we have an idea of how to write these functions. Yeah. The other question is, I mean, unfortunately, I did not really understand what is this, what is the advantage of, of these coordinate systems from the point of view of integrable systems? I suppose you want to look for symplectic leaves and integrable systems from them. Okay. Are these uh, coordinates then helpful to describe those systems? Yes. Yeah, so well, well, in, in particular, uh, just, just imagine you have you have complicated quadratic Poisson structure and you want to compute, uh, you say, the rank of this uh, of this uh, structure or find Casimir's. Is it constant rank? Huh? Is it constant rank? Uh, it yeah, I don't know. It, 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 well, uh, yeah, so, so you consider a union of maximal uh, symplectic loops that, that will be constant rank. But uh, well, if you find this coordinate, then you essentially lead, well, uh, make this bracket constant and you compute, compute the rank of it uh, quite easily and Casimir's quite explicitly. So that's, uh, that's one advantage. But also with this Poisson maps, maybe so the equation, for example, of of integrability of standard uh, flows generated by um, um, plus functions uh, or uh, conjugation invariant function, but for other uh, brackets in the Latin uh, uh, uh classification, and that 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 could help to so, so handle. So you are saying that it, it helps for describing the symplectic leaves, but does it also help for Getting sufficient number of of um, Hamiltonian signals. That, that's yeah. So that's that, that's what I think. So we, we haven't looked at it, but that's what I think, and I think this Poisson maps will help uh, doing that. Great lecture. The first time that I listened to something and passed it under. So the question is very naive. I mean, you have these matrices, and instead of using the natural coordinates, right, you do this crazy thing. Right. Suppose you had a cube yeah. with a tensor. 
Okay. I mean, I could use every element is A, I, J, A, but yeah. instead of that, I want to do something better. Is there anything like that? Uh, well, I, 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 I don't know anything like that. So, but, um, so, so what seems to be happening is that whenever you have um, uh, a Poisson variety, which is secretly Poisson homogeneous, uh, so however you arrange uh, then uh, your coordinates there, it's more likely than not to, 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 have, uh, to have a cluster structure. But, but yeah, but it's a good idea, but uh, yeah, cubes are complicated. In those possibilities, you can also put the plus sign, say the Heisenberg double end yeah. Is there any chance to get such nice coordinates in those well, well, In fact, it has been done in a quantum case for standard Poisson only bracket by uh, Sasha Shapiro and Gus Schrader. So this is uh, not part of. Not uh, for the classical, not for Poisson uh, Yes, but, but for, for, for quantized. So this way they, they managed to uh, embed. Uh, uh, the quantum uh, uh, quantized universe in enveloping in, into uh, as it uh, yeah into uh, a quantum cluster also yeah, yeah Jack. no any any linear geometry this uh, uh, well it sort of looks somehow as if it should but I, I, I just can't well I, I mean right now there is a gloomer final layer of 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 of, of least theoretic explanation so geometry i guess i guess it's not so it depends on what what you yeah, no, what you, yeah. but but with the, with non aperiodic periodic case there is actual there are spectral curves already there so it just uh well i need somebody to <laughs> yeah to understand geometry but yeah uh, I have two comments. Uh, one is probably is just an expression of my lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can just keep it going. You are, you're dealing with different personal structures. Oh, yes. Same animal. In the same animal. And the, and the animal is always a, a medium. Uh, yeah. Or, 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 or homogeneous space. Yeah. Or, okay. Let me say that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just talk about it. Uh, so. You have these uh, you know, in Dintel, our matrix structure, right? And you are giving not just the cluster construction of these, but you're generalizing, right? right? You're, you're inventing newer Poisson structures mm -hmm. on these lead groups. Uh, no, not 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 quite, but I, I will get to that. So what what we do right now is we have a different Poisson structure, different than standard. And we want to adjust this coordinate charts in such a way that they will become compatible with this Poisson structure. And such that all the. Yeah. No, 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 no. We, we take the range of the Poisson bracket and we find, uh, uh, say, let's let's say just one coordinate chart, which is global, almost everywhere defined, made of regular functions in such a way that the Poisson bracket becomes uh, flat. Okay, so it becomes a person. So, would, but so you're not inventing new right? We're, we're not, no, but, but, right. yeah. But, yeah. But there is a way, so that was uh, it's 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 it never been written, but uh, some uh, idea suggested by Sergey Fomin of how you un, un, unfreeze a bracket, a, 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 a vertex, deform your cluster structure. It stay, stays regular, and it is a question: what kind of Poisson process comes? Uh, what happens be, behind the scene? Because we also have this process. Whenever you have a cluster algebra, you have a Poisson bracket. This is this is what what we defined a long time ago. And so, what corresponds to that process is is, is another is another question. So it's a good question. So in my second one, mm -hmm. so this is just your remark about. Uh, Malkin's time, yeah. which I know a little bit about. Yeah. Um, you're what you call the Leningrad Syndicate yeah. Yeah. Uh, quadratic. Yes. But there's also, as you know, yeah. linear. Yeah, linear, exactly. Uh, yeah. And what Malkin was talking about was the linear. Right. So, but, but there is what we call the generalized Moser space and the map, the space of F, G's, A, mm -hmm. and the map, which is a triple map, which takes you into the linear structure right. and the fact that it is additive mm -hmm. follows from the, the nature of that map it's essentially the additiveness of the uh of the linear uh, Leningrad bracket uh in this particular uh, uh, realization mm -hmm. 
is nothing more than a, an obvious addition theorem for the product to resolve it. So yeah. like different values of the uh, eigenvalues. Uh, it's just an addition. Theorem. Yeah. Now, my question is, do you know if there is a, an analog of that rational map, maybe involving exponentials, which is multiplicative instead of additive? So, so I... I, I don't know, but what I do know is that the regular, the usual Moser map for total light, as it's all know and love, uh, it's, uh, it, it, uh, it works well both for, for linear and quadratic brackets. Well, and, you have both. Yeah. It's actually yeah. a dual system. Yeah. System exactly. You have a two by yeah. system. One of them is quadratic and the other Right. Is. Yeah. That, that example I know, but I'm just asking much more generally the same way that. No, I'm just I'm just saying that, but by that example, that example gives hopes that it, that, 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 that it should work. That, yeah. yeah, and that's also a sort of duality. Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah, and, and in fact, since you brought it up, so right now uh, we have an idea of how actually endow this a set of matrix polynomial with respect to trigonometric R matrix with, with, with a generalized that will be cluster structure. So it's, yeah, it, it must be, it must be there. But you, you had this, as I mentioned it yesterday, you had this fantastic uh, construction, combinatorial construction of exactly this Moser map. Yeah. Uh, where the F and the G, and they all had an interpretation that all started out with a quiver. Right, right. And then the uh, whatever the uh, boundary measurement matrix, and then from that, by gluing together uh, sides with rectangles, you add it up in the series, and you block the rational function. Right. Can you do that to the quadratic? I, 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 I think so. Yeah, it's again, it's it hasn't been done, but I, I, I think it's it's possible. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So much to do. <laughs> Okay. Um, uh, sleep and tough yeah. Quick question. Yeah. So, can you do something like that with a uh, spectral parameter? Uh, so, uh, as as I mentioned, so you you can consider sets of uh, uh, say matrix polynomials or matrix uh, rational functions with fixed pole structure uh, uh, as a Poisson submanifold versus with respect to trigonometric R matrix back. Right. And then uh, there there will be a cluster structure with one with just one variable uh, uh, being transformed according to you know longer mutation rules. But uh, yes, yeah, there is there, there is a way. Again, it's it's in the works. But yeah, there is. Uh, and, and the second question is: Is there any um, leverage that you can take of the construction to get this new the logarithm identities? Uh, so. Uh, the logarithm the identities appear when you do this mutations and you return to the same quiver with the same functions attached to them. Uh, and uh, yes, there is always, uh, so it's been done by many people, uh, Paul Goncharov, Keller, and so on. There is always the, the log uh, identities then. And actually, with Stamotin and Akanisha and Dylan Ruppel, we found a rather simple Hamiltonian in, uh, proof for, for those. But, but for that, you need periodicity. Two periodicity, and not just close. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, well, let's thank the speaker again. Well, we have to set up our next speaker, who is Nikolai Rekhidikis.